shows Phil Hartman and Norm MacDonald sitting in chairs in a TV studio. Hartman. Hello, I'm Hill Hartman, and welcome back to the weekly show where we critique SNL. We were calling the show SNL's Crazy Critics, but the future called and said that the mentally ill are the next group that the corporate liberal media intelligentsia apparatus is going to focus their attention on. So for now, we are an untitled show. Joining us to critique what I must say was an all-time classic SNL episode hosted by Dave Chappelle is none other than Dave's good buddy, Norm McDonald. Norm, your thoughts? McDonald. Why, thank you, Hill. Hartman. How about Mr. Fartman? McDonald. Uh, very well, Mr. Fartman. I must say, I've seen a lot of SNL. I was even on the show once upon a time. And I gotta say, I've seen a lot of them. But by golly, if that wasn't one of the best all-time SNL episodes, then I'm not dead. Anyway, the episode largely centered around a fight between two people I know pretty well and respect greatly. Dave Chappelle and the Jews. Dave is just about the best stand-up going these days, and I gotta say, that monologue, which we'll get to, was one of the most entertaining, if not the most entertaining, monologues in SNL history. But I have to say, we're a little delayed in putting this show out ourselves, because YouTube suspended us for a week, because this show isn't vaxxed. This Mr. Murphy, or King Fella, or whatever he wants us to call him, you know, he said some crazy shit before. He's had Abraham Lincoln stand on Bernie Mac. But the episodes where he went hard against COVID, those were the ones that got removed by YouTube. So all I can say is this. Boy, the Jews really want you to get vaxxed. Anyway, Hartman, please, Mr. McDonald, this is an unapologetically pro-Semitic program. Any thoughts on the cold open? McDonald, well, what can I say? It is a very funny concept, making fun of Trump when it looks like he's finally down and out. But Dave's monologue kind of responds to that at one point, saying he could see how in New York they believe it's the end of his era. But Dave said he lives in Ohio among the poor whites, and the New York crowd doesn't understand why Trump's so popular. It's because those people in Ohio had never seen anything like Trump before, because he's an honest liar. He said the system was rigged, and he knows it, because he uses the system. So as far as the cold open, you know, Mr. Farman, I'm worried for those New Yorkers that they haven't heard the end of the Trump era. Hartman, there's always Ron DeSantis. McDonald, have you ever seen the movie Mean Girls? Hartman, uh-huh. McDonald, well, then, you know, you'll remember that there's this gag in the movie where Lacey Chabert's character keeps repeating the word fetch, basically to make it a cool new word to say, until the Regina character snapped at her and said, stop trying to make fetch happen. Hartman, okay. McDonald, well, I think it's possible, you know, that those poor whites in Ohio will eventually say, stop trying to make DeSantis happen. Hartman, any other thoughts on the monologue, which we've touched upon? McDonald. Well, what can I say, you know? Dave started his monologue reading a note saying he denounced anti-Semitism in all its forms and that he stood with his friends in the Jewish community, showing Kanye how to buy some time. And then he said something pretty powerful regarding show business, that Kanye got in trouble for breaking show business rules. And then he said, you know, that if it's blacks, it's a gang. If it's Italians, it's a mob. And if they're Jewish, well, it's a conspiracy and you should never speak about it. Hartman, I believe he said it's a coincidence and you should never speak about it. McDonald, huh. oh yeah, right. Anyway, all I can add to what Dave said is if it's Irish... It's a bunch of drunks at a bar. Hartman. Uh-huh. 
McDonald. It was an incredible monologue, though. One of the best in the history of the show. It was so powerful, I almost had the feeling that it was going to ruin the rest of the show. It felt like, how can you even follow that? Hartman. Speaking of which, what did you think of the first sketch after the monologue, Potato Hole? McDonald. Well, my fear is that the rest of the show could suffer from having to follow such a great monologue, you know, were alleviated with the Potato Hole sketch, where a bunch of white newscasters kept insisting that Dave's character tell him what the Potato Hole was that he was referring to in his song, only to find out that Potato Hole was a symbol for black people regarding white oppression. It was hilarious. Armin, what did you think of the video sketch, House of the Dragon? McDonald, well, I gotta say, I love Game of Thrones. I love seeing Rawlings and Ice-T. And I love Chappelle's show. So seeing Tyrone Biggums warm my otherwise dead heart. It made me want to smoke some crack. Harbin looks backstage and says, Can one of the skirts backstage please get Mr. McDonald some crack? Gilda Radner comes out and gives McDonald a crack pipe filled with crack, which he begins to smoke. Harbin, how about the next sketch in the barber shop? McDonald, wow, I got to say, thanks, Mr. Farman. That's some good crap. But, yes, Mr. Longfellow, he's been outstanding his rookie season, and he played the lone white guy in the black barber shop real well. It reminded me of Snoddle 26, where I went into a barber shop run by Richard Pryor to ask Johnny Cochran how much he would charge me if I were to have been charged with murdering my then-girlfriend, Nicole Brown. Hartman. And I believe since that time, Miss Brown has been seen canoodling with first John Belushi and now Phil Hartman. McDonald, I think they're just placeholders until Eddie Murphy dies. Hartman, what did you think of Black Stars to performances? McDonald, I thought they were amazing, you know. A couple of Black Stars, those two, I tell you. Anyway... Any chance your help can refill my crack pipe? Radner comes out and refills McDonald's crack pipe, which he then smokes. Harvin, what did you think of Weekend Update? McDonald, well, I got to say, you know, I love being on Weekend Update. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, but my God, to get fired for bringing up the trial of the century seems a little silly in hindsight. Hartman. No, I mean this week's SNL Weekend Update. McDonald. All oh, right, I apologize. You gave me crack for some reason. Colin and Michael were as good as ever. The picture of Tucker Carlson saying it shows him trying to make it through No Nut November was pretty amazing. And I have to say, the quartet of new cast members has been great. I enjoyed Marcelo Hernandez's character, Tito Suarez, right for president under the slogan, Everything's Basically Fine. Especially when you smoke crack. Hartman, did Marcello say that? McDonald, no, I'm saying it because I've been smoking crack here on your show. Anyway, there's a young lady we should all be keeping an eye on, that's Sarah Sherman. I feel like the audience was less than receptive when her Sarah News background came out, and she didn't even blink, and then absolutely killed it and had the audience eaten out of her hands. She's a future superstar comedic force, especially for a lesbian. Hartman, Sarah made the point, Norm, that she's straight despite the queer haircut. McDonald, is that right? Well then, can't wait until she dies. Hartman, moving on from Weekend Update, what did you think of the sketch Black Heaven? McDonald, uh, do you have any more crack? Hartman, sorry, we're all out. McDonald, damn it. Anyway, Mr. Farman, you know that our former producer, Joe King, is no longer affiliated with Saturday Not Alive. But previously, you know, he had a belief that various podcasts and shows were sending him secret messages. Hartman, uh-huh. McDonald, and while I was watching this particular sketch, you know, it dawned on me that this sketch was a secret message to Joe King.
Hartman. How so? McDonald. Well, the sketch involved black heaven. And our show was all dead people, you know? And the conceit of the sketch was that Dave had Mikey Day in his role in the sketch, which caused Mikey to have to talk and say things that are stereotypically said by black people. And since Joe King has previously portrayed the likes of Martin Luther King, Richard Pryor, Johnny Cochran, Bernie Mac, Rosa Parks, Sidney Pontier, Malcolm X, Kobe Bryant, Walter Payton, Muhammad Ali, Dwayne Haskins, Chadwick Boseman, Bill Russell, Michael Clark Duncan, Patrice O'Neill, Nelson Mandela, Hartman. We get the point. McDonald. Well, like Mikey Day in the sketch, it's a little unnerving to have a white man portray black people. And King had teased having Harriet Tubman host and she was a contestant on Jeopardy on the first Saturday Not Alive episode. And Dave said at the end of the sketch that the next sketch would be one where Mikey is involved and it gets into the horrors and atrocities of the Underground Railroad. So that sketch was a secret message to Joe King. Hartman, oh boy. And finally, what did you think of the Please Don't Destroy Guys video sketch featuring Molly Carney? McDonald, Molly Carney, who is she? Hartman, <coughs> they is one of the four new cast members. McDonald, why are you saying they? Isn't she one person? Hartman, where have you been, Norm? Molly uses the pronouns they, them, not she, her. McDonald, uh, I apologize. I must have missed that. On account of being dead. Anyway, the sketch involved Molly inadvertently running for attorney general and winning. With hijinks ensuing. I thought they did a great job, all four of them. And Sherman, as Molly's campaign wife, was a very nice touch. Hartman. Okay, and any final thoughts on this week's episode? McDonald. Well, you know, I know some people think Dave is controversial, but he's a comedian making jokes. No group should be above satire. If you want to normalize a group, there's nothing more normal than a comedian poking fun at you. So I feel for those who have felt wrong by what Dave has said, but both the Jews and the transsexuals, and perhaps especially Jewish transsexuals, should realize that Dave's jokes don't make people hate their groups, but instead the jokes relieve tension and cause a normalization of those groups for Dave's audience. And I'd be remiss if I didn't pay respects to a Polish World War II veteran, the producer's paternal grandfather-in-law. Rest in peace, Jaju. And dead from the earth, we're not alive. It's Saturday Night Alive, starring John Belushi, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Norm MacDonald, Gilda Radner, Danitra Vance, and many other special deceased contributors. Musical guest, Easy E. And your host, Paul Mooney. Everybody, Paul Mooney. Applause, applause, applause. Mooney. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm sure you all remember me from the Chappelle Show. Applause, applause, applause. Mooney. And with Dave hosting SNL this week, it's only fitting that I host this show. Now, I know you have a whole lot of questions. Mooney puts on a large brown fedora with a purple feather and says, So how about I give you a chance to ask Negro Damas some questions? John Belushi raises his hand in the audience. Mooney, yes, what's your question? 
Belushi, who's going to be the next president to die? Mooney closes his eyes, opens them and says, Jimmy Carter will be the next president to die. After Joe Biden has him killed for complaining about the price of gas in 2023. Next question. Shows Gilda Radner in the audience who asks, Will the LGBTQ community ever forgive Dave Chappelle? Mooney closes his eyes, opens them and says, They will only forgive Dave after he exposes his asshole and claims it's his new pussy. Next question. Shows Denitra Vance in the audience, who asks, Are the Jewish people ever going to forgive Dave Chappelle? Mooney closes his eyes, opens them and says, They will only forgive him once they find out their coming Messiah's favorite movie is half-baked. Mooney takes off the fedora, puts on a white skull cap and says, Okay, enough indulging you white folk with Negro Damas. Now it's time to ask a black dude. With me, Paul Mooney. Applause, applause, applause. Barley raises his hand in the audience and asks, Will there ever be cash reparations for African Americans? Mooney, there will be once biotech firms figure out how to profit on reparations. Next question. Jan Hooks raises her hand in the audience and asks, Have you ever been with a white lady? Mooney, I've never been with just one white lady. I prefer to have my white girls in Paris. Okay, final question. Shows Phil Hartman in the audience who asks, What can be done about inner city violence where so many black youths are killed by guns? Mooney, you give them those reparations you owe them. Maybe they'll act like they have some to lose. Hartman, well, what if that doesn't work? Mooney, who do I look like to you, sir? Negro Damas? Just give him the damn money and we'll go from there. Folks, we have a great show tonight. We'll all be answering a lot more questions. And Easy e is here. So y'all better be ready for Boys in the Hood. Because it's on, son. We'll be right back.